So this is my current setup, just being tested. Uh, I thought I'd check to see if the vacuum was strong enough to go through the two solenoids, uh, a bunch of tubing, and reliably turn on and off. Uh, so I had to use two solenoids. After my experimentation, I realized I needed two solenoids because I needed to break both of them to air, to atmosphere. You need to break the vacuum side so you don't burn the motor out. And you need to break the needle side so that the back pressure, the back vacuum behind the part, doesn't hold the part you know, on the needle. If you don't break that, that vacuum, or have a vacuum breaker, then um, your part won't fall. Um, and if you're dealing with smaller parts, I found that uh, the statics kind of a problem and you can overcome the static by introducing uh, a second method of air by um, add more pressure to eject the part a little bit but um, I'm not I don't plan on going below 603 anytime soon so this should work um, I might need to upgrade my pump this is an old aquarium pump I had that I reversed it wasn't really made to be reversed so I kind of had to make it work. Some of the nicer pumps you can actually just take the uh, diaphragms out and spin them around and it'll work much better. And I just made a little flow. Anybody knows how to make a really cheap where you get those little flow beads? Uh, I'd love to do some flow testing. So sticking with the theme of um, you know a really cheap low-cost DIY pickup tool I was just going to make my own pens, and I might still do a tutorial on that, but but then I was on eBay, and I just happened to be looking around for some vacuum pickup pens. And uh, this guy was selling three of them with all these uh, needles. And um, I got them for a steal, so I bought them all. And uh, you can see they're just uh, red anodized aluminum tubes that were machined with narrowing and uh, a little uh, scoop for your finger. And it looks like the ends were press fit or maybe masked. I think they were press fit into the tube. Or maybe they're glued. And those are your fittings. And it's the same size fitting for both sides. So my plan is to just flip it around and then cover that hole up and then use the foot control. And I thought it'd be great to have multiple that's why I wanted to make a cheap one because I have multiple pens because you don't want to be changing your tips. When you're, you know, you're putting stuff together, you're doing your small parts, and then you want to go to your big parts. Um, it'd be nice to just turn a valve and grab a bigger pen, uh, and not have to pull the tips off, put the tips on. Every time you change tips, it's uh, you have to deal with. You might have leaks and stuff like that, and, and they're really small. You don't really want to be pulling these twenty-something gauge needles off and bending on because they're they're really hard to get. The ones that are bent at the right angle, um, you don't want to break them. So I thought I'd make a little holder and have three different ones. They look a little different. One's a, a little different. It's like pinkish. Even anodization on the other two are different. But it came with a whole lot of needles. These tiniest needles I've ever seen. This comes with some extra attachments. I find these attached, these uh, little suction cups are hard to find. You have to really buy like a whole set of them. So and this is pretty much how I plan on using it. Uh, and what's good about these, I can probably use them with, uh, you know, finger vacuum control or a motor control if I just plug that hole. Maybe I'll make a little silicone something to plug it in. And then I came with these filters. I don't have enough vacuum to put a filter in line.
but you probably want to filter in line if you're picking up anything that might have dust or dirty. Uh, some of these small components you can actually suck up. You don't want any of that damaging your pump. Um, especially if you're reworking a board and it's got flux on it or something like that. You don't want anything sucking up into that vacuum. Um, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just using a really crappy pump. But it also saves your lines from getting dirty and stuff. I'm not going to use this thick, heavy vacuum hose. Uh, it's made to not collapse in the high vacuum. I'm just going to use a lower vacuum and a regular silicone hose. Some silicone hoses are a little bit um, sturdier. So you got to find one that's not going to collapse on you. Aquarium hose is pretty good. Um, some of the, the, the finer. Um, you don't want the stiff stuff. You want something really loose. You could be moving it around on the bench. So it works pretty good. You can see sometimes the static will stick. I'm surprised they're not making um, some other solution for that. Different material. I guess uh, anything that's different is going to be more malleable and bend. So I decided to let me build a more permanent device to control. Um, these solenoids and get a foot pedal. So I just went with the cheapest everything I could find. I have some, um, I figured I'd use phono jacks. I have some, they're cheap. You can buy, you can get these cables. You probably have one in the box somewhere. These mono cables. And uh, I think that's what some things use. I think tattoo machines might already use phono jacks. I think it's the bigger ones though. Not a perfect fit, but for now, for prototyping, it'll work. Um, I just bought the cheapest one I could buy. This is one of those lamp switches. But the cool thing about it is you can latch it. It's a but if you just tap it, it's going to momentary connect. So uh, I'm just using it. You're going to use that for now. I might replace the switch with something better. And it works. So, to the next part. So I just electrical tape these uh, two solenoids in the configuration I wanted them on a, on a PCB. Uh, that's just going to hold it for now. And... Um, you know, later I'll use better valves, or I couldn't find a four-way valve, so I'm just using two right now. And I did, you can unscrew the ends of these and rotate them so that they're in whatever alignment you want them to be in. It doesn't change the, how they work, they just, um, you know, however you want them to be, you know, facing. So that's what I did, and I'm just going to move them. And I basically just have one valve going to the other valve, and uh, so when one is open... Uh, so they both fire at the same time. One one closes one side and one closes the other side. And uh, the way I hook it up is just so that they both break to atmosphere. Since this is a prototype, I'm just not going to hardwire anything. I'm just going to probably put some terminals on here. And then I can just use that as a terminal block and wire it up. Kind of like a uh, wired breadboard. Um, and it should let me change some stuff. I'm probably going to need to make some adjustments to some stuff. 
Um, I don't even know what the requirements for these pumps are. I'm probably going to put them in, in a parallel. And uh, they take 6 volts, I believe. 220 milliamps. Um, but some of these say 3 volts. Some of them, when you buy them, they say 12 volts. I think it's 6 volts. And I think I'm going to get faster response putting them in parallel. And I'll probably have to put some extra components on here, like maybe a capacitor. I'll put a diode for uh, like a flyback diode because these are electromagnets. And, um, you know, whatever I can do to make them operate fastest. That's what I'm concerned about. You want the air to switch as fast as possible. And that's why turning a pump on and off is just not good enough. Even though it's a diaphragm pump and it'll hold vacuum, um, you can't sh you can't turn it on and off as fast as you might want to. All right, it's all wired up. Power just goes through this foot switch. Uh, you know, not doing anything fancy right now. No relay, no um, no logic control. I'm actually passing the full voltage through the switch. So I'll probably put an SSR, use a digital logic uh, level through the switch. Uh, and then I can control whether I want it to switch on, normally open, normally closed, and how I want the um, solenoids to fire. Uh, you might want a, some kind of delay between the two. So you could even put uh, some you know, electronics in there. But for now, I'm just going to have it digital input control, digital solenoid control, maybe, uh, maybe use some kind of uh, digital input as well with the transistor to drive these solenoids. And then I can wire that up however I want. Uh, we'll just use a 5 volt signal that can be compatible with uh, anything else. You know. I don't want to overcomplicate it, it is very simple. So for now, this should work. And um, I kind of want to get the simplest way that you can do it. I'm going to try this out. In real life, you know, in a real scenario, actually building a board and see how it works. And I'll make design decisions uh, from what I gather. And then, uh, you know, maybe print a case, uh, put some kind of quick connects, um, or just, you know, simple barbs. And um, probably put an air valve up so I can switch between different uh, tools. And uh, if I could build this all into a box and then have vacuum and then have a pressure side as well, then I'll, you know, that'll be useful for my bench for a few different things. I definitely need more suction. Um, I think I'm losing a lot with this um, redu reduced. These solenoids are only like three millimeter instead of four millimeter or. I don't know what the inner diameter is. I'll have to check. I think it's two millimeter versus aquarium hose, which is four millimeter. I'm probably losing some air in that reduction, and I'm probably losing a lot of vacuum through the silicone hose. Uh, you know, as it as it gives because it can it can uh, flex uh, inward. So a shorter hose might be better. Um, I think just increasing the vacuum with a bigger pump um, should should take care of most of my problems here. Just not being able to pick certain things up, larger items. It should pick it up a lot um, sturdier and, and definitely not drop your stuff.
Uh, like I have a lot of problems picking up these USB jacks, even with suction cups. Uh, this is testing 603 and 402 components. Um, it works, but uh, static's a problem. Uh, it might not be such a problem when there's actual solder paste to grab it, surface tension. Um, we'll just have to see. Um, I think the only other way to get around that is to add some kind of positive pressure that you switch in for a, a timed pulse to blow it off. I think that's what pick and place machines do, but for now it works. Till next time.